So thank you all so much for joining us here this afternoon. Um, you know, I just wanted to give a short introduction. Um, when we first started doing the Colleague to Colleague Tech Talk series about three years ago, I would not have guessed that we would ever have a student presenting. Um, after all, it is called Colleague to Colleague, right? But today's presenter, Jevna Cook, is an exceptional student. Jevna is a senior mathematics major in her last semester at ASU. She is a skilled mathematician, which is what made her a great choice for the project she's going to tell you about today. But what really struck me was her attention to detail and the care and consideration that she put into her work. So if you've heard me talk about digital accessibility, you've undoubtedly heard me talk about how we're designing content for both humans and the assistive technology that they use. Um, throughout her project, Jevna always remained focused on our students and the experience that they would have with the content she was producing. She actually taught herself how to use math type and how to use a screen reader. So she really hit the ground running with this project and I'm really excited for her to share her presentation today. Um, if you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to post those in the chat and Jevna will address them as they come up. Um, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the presentation over to Jevna. Alrighty, thank you. And thank you everyone for coming today and those who are listening to recording. So, might as well just get it started for the sake of time. Why do I know what I know? Which, you know, as a student who has only worked on this project, how do I know what I'm talking about? You know, uh, I had, over the past couple of months, I have been revising a textbook for uh, Dr. Huckabee in the mathematics department. Um, this is written by him and Dr. Moreland, who was a former professor. And this textbook is typically used in 4321, which is college geometry, and 4322, which is survey of mathematics with application, which is a, um, a, a education centered course. And it was written back in 2005. So about 17 years ago. So it's a bit, <laughs> it was a bit old. My main goal was to convert this text into an accessible and updated format. My main metric was the accessibility checker in Microsoft Word, which we'll talk a bit more in depth later. And I found as I went through, you know, with the screen reader and just looking at that, the accessibility checker does not tell me everything that is wrong. It can only make guesses and what it's document, it can't know everything. It's not human. And a bit more context. This took me about 37 hours to complete over, like I said, of course, several months. And it was 220 pages of text. And because of some formatting, it became about 240 pages of text when it was all finished. Uh, and about half of these pages were from the textbook, and the other half were the 19 exercises that adjoined the textbook. So I want to do something fun. I think this is interesting when they introduce this. So in a lot of our classes, in a lot of our experience, we have these rubrics for our students. Well, why not have a rubric for our accommodations? We need to make sure the text is easily legible. This will make up two points. We need to use the inbuilt list making tools, which is another two points. And a big thing is making sure as much of this as the text is clear, which sounds simple, but is much more complex. And we will be getting into that. And that's 10 points. And get the automatic checker to detect no issues besides math type equations. And I'll explain why there's that exception later. That's for six points for 20 points total. So here's how to get our 20 out of 20, making text legible. We need to make sure our entire document is in a sans serif font. These kind of fonts are Arial to Homa, which this whole presentation is in. So if you're wondering, what does this look like? Uh, <laughs> just look at the screen, you know, and for Diana. Typically, a lot of in professional classes, which I've done when I wrote essays, we use Times New Roman. And that is not one we want to use because, um, sorry is um has these hookins which can be hard to read if you're having if you have trouble seeing so 
we want to make sure it's clear as possible. And another big point is if you're using color, it needs to be easily read. For instance, that says, isn't this hard to read? And it's yellow against white, which is hard to read naturally just because of the contrast. So we need to think in dark colors or shades or colors that have a good contrast with the colors around it. So like black and white easily pops. And another big thing is we cannot use color to convey information because if you cannot see color or cannot see at all, you do not know that there is information being withheld from you, just period. So our next thing is to use the inbuilt list making tools. Simply put, don't, don't make your list by hand. Uh, this includes multiple choice questions. So you would need to use the tools at the top of Microsoft Word to make your list. It's it's a simple thing, but it helps with navigation, with uh, screen readers, and just alternative viewing methods. Like I said here, they serve a visual and technological purpose. And another big thing is the SISTA programs, the text-to-speech and text-to-rail programs, will also pick up on these lists. And this will tell the students, like, hey, this is a list. These things are associated with each other. And, yeah. and it also, it looks cleaner and it's more standardized because that list will be the same throughout. There's no, oh, no, I added an extra space or an extra tab. So our biggest thing is clarity. What may need clarification? Equations, images, descriptors of objects, which is a bit vague, but I'll show you what I mean in tables. And fill the blanks. Equation clarity. We use math type and math player to ensure equations are audibly understandable. However, math player is not omniscient, so you may make sure what is play is what you want, meaning you need to listen to it. If you're using a certain tool math player for the first time, you need to listen to it. We'll get in more detail right now. But first, why this program math type? I know I've spoken to a lot of professors and a lot of them just don't use it or aren't used to it and are more used to something like latex. The reason is math type is supported by screen readers. In more detail, math type allows us to make math ML language, which is like LaTeX, but it's supported by screen readers. And LaTeX isn't, which is a big thing in accessibility. And But if you have all these LaTeX equations, you can still use math to convert them. So they're not, you don't have to remake everything. You just need to convert them, which is time and effort but it's time and effort you should do. The following slides, I'm going to point out how it's done. And as a brief side note, the Office of Special Education Rehabilitative Services, which is part of the Department of Education, encourages state and local education agencies to use MathML. So the government is recommending we should use this. It kind of shows that like, hey, this has been vetted it has been approved. People have looked at it and they're like, this is a good program to use. And it was also developed from with, uh, <clears throat> sorry, alongside W3C. And these are people who set the standards for online content. Now, this presentation is more focused on Microsoft Word, but a lot of this still applies to online content. Now, side note to a side note. If you do not know what a screen reader is, a screen reader is an assistive technology that reads out information on the screen. And this can be done in several ways, such as keyboard shortcuts or hovering the mouse over the text. When I was doing my project, I mostly just used the mouse because that made the most sense to me. But there may be situations where the students 
do not know or cannot use the mouse. And these keyboard shortcuts are very important. And with the list, the list that I was talking about earlier work with these shortcuts. So again, another reason we need to make sure we use the list that are built with Microsoft. And some screen readers like NVDA have functionality with Math Player, which allows them to read out math content within the screen reader. There are some others, however, the one that I'm used to, the one I have experience with, and the one that seems to be most recommended is NVDA. So, biggest thing I heard a lot of people will know, how do you use MathType? So, this is going from assumption you've already downloaded the MathType program onto your computer. If you need help, you can easily contact the IT department and they'll help you get it set up because you will need a product key and ASG will provide that. So, Assuming you contact IT and all that, you would click on the math type uh, tab in Word. And then in the insert equation sec section, you would select what you want to insert. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of options here. So let's go through them. Inline equations insert equations in line with the text. So basically, it's like if you were typing and it's like a sentence and it's just there. It's treated just like it's in the text. Left and right numbered will put a new equation on the equation on the new line and it will be centered on the page. And it will have a number either left on the left side of the page or the right side of the page. And you can set the chapter and section number. That is more, if that's more of a preference in my opinion, but I, I didn't really use it. And then display functions, uh, similar to the left and right numbered, but it won't have the numbers. It'll just be centered on a new line. And an input panel lets you write your equations by hand, either using your mouth or a drawing tablet. However, since it's using AI to, to try to figure out what you wrote, it might not be accurate. So you, it's, it's recommended to use one of the other ones. So when you pick one of those things, no matter what besides the input panel, because it's a bit different, you know, since you're writing it, I wonder like this will come up. And there is a lot of options. Now, the biggest thing I need to make very clear is I cannot teach, you cannot just be taught every single button. You need to explore it. And that does take time to learn, okay, what's in this tab, what's in this tab. And just kind of learn the program. I can I can help you with some tips and stuff or, or where your content may be located or may be. But it's best to try this out for yourself. And also, if you want to convert your latex code, you would just copy and paste it into this window and it'll convert automatically. So that's that. Now we need to talk about another big thing with this. If you want to put like text and math type, so like instead of it reading out like a math equation, it'll read out text, like say, you want to have like a proof table, which we'll get into in a minute, and you want to have the reasons you would need to use the text style function, but you also need to make sure you switch in the math. The default is math. So if you're only writing equations, don't worry about what I just said. <laughs> but you do need to worry about define, which is at the bottom of this list. So we need to make sure whenever you're starting a new document or um, starting to edit some of your things, you go to define and you do these settings because the default um, thing for math type is Times New Roman. But as we discussed earlier, Times New Roman is not sans serif. So we need to switch it to something else like Tahoma. 
and another thing I noticed personally when I was trying to read it, uh, what I post, uh, what I would um, create with these equations is that uh, italic variables, which is a uh, by default turned on, it can sometimes kind of blend into some numbers and some symbols. So it's best to have them turned off, just so we don't lose some clarity with um, our equations. And then when you've got that done, you've got your equation ready and you're ready to save. You will need to hit the X in the top right corner. So right up here. And then it'll open this dialog box right here. And you need to hit yes. And it'll add the equation to your doc document. This is a very simple thing, but if you hit no, it just is all your work. And depending on how complex that equation is, that that could be very frustrating. I speak from experience. <laughs> and cancel, it just cancels this and you don't save it, add it to your doc, you know, remove all your work. It's just back to editing. So now we need to move on to math player because this is another big thing. However, the thing with math player is mo most of the settings are dependent on what the student needs. So when you would have math player installed, which unlike math type is free. And like I said, you can ask IT to help you with that. We need to go to settings and we need to make sure we change two specific settings, the subject area and the speech for and speech tab, which is this one right here. The reason for this, which should be fairly apparent, but for sake of clarity, math layer, as I mentioned earlier, is not omniscient. It will, like it says right here, it will try to assume what you want, which isn't always true. So, sadly, it's not very helpful with the areas. <laughs> um, I know we have some people from other departments besides math, and as you can see, uh, you're a bit left out. <laughs> and for y'all, I can only just say, experiment with them and try to see what which one works best for you. Because some of them will read stuff off different. On the next slide, I will show you what happens sometimes. And then on the other part, I recommend for our math department people spell it out or off uh, since we don't want anything um, being detected as like a chemical compound, like when we need variables or shapes or just in general and make sure it reads out every single thing. And for any chemistry folks here, um, it's just kind of whatever you want your students to hear. Basically, like if you want them to be read HTO as water, then yeah. Now, math player is unpredictable. This, um, this symbol, is either can be either approximately two or congruent depending on whether you have something other than geometry on. When I was um, working on this project, of course, this is a geometry project. Um, congruent symbols came up a lot, and I was doing a spot check of one of my equations, and it said line AB was approximately equal to BC or something like that. And I was like. That's not what it should say. <laughs> so I did some digging and found out for this certain topic, I need to make sure it's on geometry or else this error will occur. And then another big thing is this symbol, the tilde, is typically used to denote logic or not in logic statements. So something it's not A, not B. However, in all my experimenting, I could not get to ever say approximately. So you will have to use the um, sideways L symbol. I do not know the official name, so that's that. But to me, it's the sideways L. 
to denote not. And finally, the bot has trouble with primes. So in this little helpful dialog box, um, in the top row, there is the primes. And I recommend you use those buttons to make to note something as being a prime, just because we don't want the bot to get confused. <laughs> so images. If you include an image, it needs to have alt text. Full stop has to have alt text. And the alt text needs to be able to describe the image accurate enough that if the image wasn't there, you can still make sense of it. And what that basically is saying, if you are blind, you should be able to know what this image is trying to convey. And if you don't believe your image can do that, you need to think of an alternative assessment in that case. Because if you cannot convey what you should see, then you're going to lose out on some students potentially. And then descriptors. Anything that describes an object needs to be clear and don't automatically assume something is clear. So the demonstrate oops, sorry. To demonstrate this, I want to give y'all a test. I don't need y'all to write anything. I just want y'all to mentally think about this. So what do you think a text to speech bot will say? Uh, when it reads this out. Just think for a few seconds. Now, I shall demonstrate. And I record this on my computer with NVDA. Line up. Line up. And I'll play that again. Line up. Line up. That's not line A, B. <laughs> Plain put. Okay, what about a different one? Line FE. Give y'all a few seconds to think about that. All right, let's see. Line FE. Line FE. Line FE. Which, um, if I remember my chemistry right, FE is, sounds more like. Iron, yeah, F E. I, I don't know. <laughs> like Ferris. Angle A D E. Give y'all a few seconds to think. Angle aid. Angle aid. <laughs> Angle aid. It, Angle aid. You know, um, it's just these funny things, you know, like aid. Okay. Here's a fun one. Pentagon F G H I J. Um, I don't think any of y'all could guess what this is. Pentagon Fkage. <laughs> Pentagon Fkage. Yes, it's Fkage Fkage. Uh, you know, <laughs> and then triangle AOC will sound like, oh, oh no. Triangle AOC. AOC. In my notes, I had written this uh, being called AOK. <laughs> it, and then line ED. Be and I'll just do this one quickly. Line ed. Line ed. And finally, angle B A D. Angle bad. <laughs> this is my favorite one I found while working on this project because this did come up. All of these are actually from this geometry project. I found all of these because I was after I realized. Um, some of these are being misread. I would listen to every single one I found that I hadn't encountered before to hear it, to make sure it was done right. And one day I was just working 
and I saw this. I knew what was going to happen, but I had to hear it. And I heard. Angle bad. Right, comedy writes itself. <laughs> so that's bad, as it just told us. We cannot have these bots not conveying their permission clear. Well, angle bad, you can know, okay, it's probably B A D, you know, spelling bad. But with the Pentagon example, finish the hinge. You know, it, it's not clear. Like, okay, what letters are here? What is here? We need to fix this. So, a solution could be, okay, if we put a space in between every single letter, that will force it to read the letters individually. However, line A space B kind of looks strange and can just be misconstrued as line A with a random B. It's not entirely clear for the students who um, do not need these accessibility tools or do not want to use them. So, okay, we can't put a space there. Well, if we use math type, because we can make math type read it as a math equation and read it each out. Okay, it works, but because of how math type and math ML works, a math player, it will not read it out automatically. Even if you hover over it with like a screen reader or navigate to it, you need to manually listen every single time. And maybe in a class that isn't about geometry and this thing comes up randomly, I mean, not often, you might be able to get away with it, but in a textbook about geometry, this is not a good solution. You know, if you're using a lot of these acronym or den uh, denotations of these shapes and these figures, you cannot use math type or it will be a burden to students in their learning. It's very frustrating and not a good answer. When I, I had originally put everything in math type, I did the whole document, all these a, B's and F, E's and angle bads I put into math type. And then I started using the screen reader because Jane pointed out to me, hey, you should try using this. And I learned how frustrating it is to have to go through these things. And it can just be anywhere. In the it's like a minefield. So we had to find a different solution. So putting a space in between, but also doing something really absurd, just out there. And that's the answer. Putting a space in between, but also doing something absurd. Now, what might be so absurd? What could you do? What have I done? What have I created, you may ask? Well, if the space wasn't there, but it also was, which is a contradiction. The reason A, B does not work is it looks incorrect and it's not clear, right? Well, if it didn't look incorrect, <laughs> what if it looked right? What if we couldn't see it? We turn the space practically invisible. I say practically because you can still see it. So what you do is you highlight the space you put in between. You set the font size to one, the lowest it can go in Microsoft Word, and then you're done. Now, I don't know if y'all can notice, but I, I done has a space between every single letter. This is what it should look like. It's a very subtle difference that if you're not aware and not looking at it, or you do not have done next to done, or Dione, I guess, you would not notice. This, to me, is incredibly just absurd, but it works. <laughs> the text or speech will read it out properly. Angle bad is now angle BAD. Everything's good. And most 
most likely, unless your students are analyzing every single thing, they will not notice this. The only people who will definitely notice this is if you have someone who's using Braille. Which leads me into another point, which there's not a slide for this is just me mentioning this. This works for most people. This does not work for everybody. A big thing with creating accessible things is to make sure it works for most. But you cannot do this for everybody. This will not work for everybody. So you have to be ready to make changes specifically to the student's needs if they need it. So if you've done this for your document and you've had a student come in and like, hey, I can't, I need to use this. I need to use Braille. You need to let them know like, hey, things are going to look weird for you. Please understand. And if it becomes too much trouble, you're going to need to work with them and maybe try to change it or find a different solution. However, at the end of the day, this right here will hit most students' needs. Another thing, tables. Tables and you. If your table is to include a math type equation, do not use default tables. No ifs, ands, or buts. NVDA, the screen reader I tested with, will not let users read math type objects in tables. Disclaimer, I couldn't get it to work. Maybe somewhere out there hidden deep on the web is someone who figured it out. But I, so I cannot reasonably recommend you use the default tables when using in, uh, math type objects. The solution is matrix C's, <laughs> which sounds weird because a matrix C. You can't use matrix C's. They have all these properties and who cares? We're, we're not going to use those properties. We're going to overlook it and we're going to treat them like tables. So matrix C's in you. In our math type dialog, we need to clip the tab that is only a bunch of squares with no border. In this image, I have circled it for you. In the bottom right corner, we shall see our matrix table hybrid Frankenstein's monster we shall create. And we're going to want to click it to open the customization window. And, and when I mean bottom right corner, I mean this one right here, the one with all the dashed lines. And then we get this dialog window. And here we can adjust everything about the matrix from the number of rows to the columns, how they're partitioned, um, and change the partition. As you can see, this has a T shape. You can just click on the space and it will change it. And you can, it has different styles there. It has dotted lines, it has dashed lines, it has just these solid lines that you can see here. Change comma alignment, row alignment, the width, the whole deal. And this is where you want to experiment to if you're going to be needing tables with math type objects. And another big thing with matrix C's with math type is you cannot edit it when you hit OK, when you add it to your editing field. If you decided, oh no, I needed another row, you have to remake it. <laughs> um, that happened a lot to me. Uh, it's just something you have to get used to and understand that you can't just add to it. Or at least I couldn't get it to work and I don't think there's an inbuilt way. Um, but for example, uh, what this dialog window right here is actually what I would use to make two column proofs in this geometry textbook. So as you can see, we got the line down the middle and line right there you can have all your reasons, your givens, all the good stuff. So when you click OK, you're going to this will appear there. And it'll look like this. 
and you can click on the screen squares and you will start to type on it. Um, do note, like, this is a very important thing when I discovered when doing two column proofs is if there is nothing in the green square, when it's um, in the Word document, there isn't a green square, it's just a blank. So if you want your students to be able to fill in in these spaces, you can just not type in it and they'll have the blank space. So, <laughs> why fill in the blanks are terrible from the accessibility perspective. To say, you know, fill in the blank questions being read by text to speech bots can go one of two ways that I've noticed when I listen to them. Option A, the bot will read out every underscore slash space. And if you have 10 underscores, you know, low lines, you would just hear underscore, 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 and so on. It is not fun to sit there and listen to that. So we do not want to make students sit there and listen to that, especially if you have multiple fill in the blanks, because that's a lot of underscores. <laughs> it's very annoying and frustrating. Or B, I notice the bot just won't read anything out. It'll just skip it, which is good, but at the same time, you might, the student might not know there is a blank or where the blank is. And if they have trouble with vision, you're just, you know, not helping them. It's not helpful to them. Clarity is missing. So there needs to be a solution. What are solutions? Find an alternate. Just don't use them. If you want to ask them a question, figure out another way to do it. Or if you want to use a fill in the blank type question, use a word, phrase, or variable X to denote something is missing. Say, replace X in the following sentence. I know me and Dr. Huckabee, we came up with just in brackets, fill in the blank, which it works. It's a fill in the blank, but there's no actual blank because if there was an actual blank, it would be either very annoying or we would lose out on clarity, which is two things we do not want for our students. Now, we have gone through the gauntlet. We need to get our last couple points. We need a pass accessibility checker. And you're going to fail if you use anything with math type. If you have one equation there, you will have something the accessibility checker will flag. Normally, you don't want to flag anything or anything that isn't it just kind of going haywire. Because math type equations are recognized as images by it because that's just how math type puts this information out there. I do not necessarily know why from the technical side, I just know that's what it is. So math types equations will be flagged as needing an alternative text that are normal images, definitely. So we use a different criteria for the accessibility checker. If it, the only thing it says you need to add all text to is math type equations, you did it. You passed. You got your points. And I do want to note that you can feel free to use alt text to note that there is something there for your students to read. Um, however, it's not a requirement. It's not something that we require for our documents. Um, but if you do have it, you can go ahead and try. So congratulations. We've successfully made our doc document as accessible as possible. Now we need to save it as a Word document. And provide it to your students as a Word document. Do not convert it to a PDF. 
if your students want PDFs, they can use the inbuilt tool on Blackboard to download it as an alternative format. The issue with PDFs is in the conversion process, it, it still will have the map images there. However, they aren't math type anymore, if that makes sense. It's because of the whole, it's technically an image in a document. It just loses all its properties. So anything like math layer, it won't, it won't see it and won't understand it. So we need to leave it in it as a work document. And that's a very important detail because everything we just done with the math type and learning all that, if you don't save it as a word document, you just run it all away. You just waste your time. Wow. <laughs> you know, we just need the word documents. And then you need to also make sure your students know the material contains math type as if they do not have math type installed or the fonts installed, it will not, they will just be missing text images. Um, there are several resources out there. I didn't include this in, the, um, in this presentation because me and Jana talked about it and she's going to be adding it to the um, default template, the um, notice I made for any documents that contain math type on you need to have these fonts installed. Here is how to do it. And that is the end of my presentation. If y'all have any questions, feel free to speak up. Um, can you add the delete rows and columns in the matrix? You can. Go to the format menu and map type. Really? Huh. That could have saved me a lot of time. Yeah, see, exactly. This is what these talks are about, collaboration, because I wouldn't have known that. I tried, couldn't find it. So now I know, and now we know that we can. We had to go to the format menu and math type. Awesome. All right. I will make a note of that. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. Does anyone have anything else they wish to ask or share? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sweats. Thank you. Thank you. I'm greatly honored to have this opportunity. Um, did you add alt text to the images or is that my project? Um, I did not add alt text to um, the images as that's what we uh, had discussed um, in the beginning. But I can definitely try to go ahead and do it. <laughs> I have one question, I'm sorry. So sorry, in that sorry. one that they were asking about the alt text and images, would you yes. still need alt text for the images that are math equations because it, be, it should still be reading as a math equation, correct? Instead yes, of an image. it should still be reading. Um, it's just Microsoft's checker doesn't, it, it, they aren't communicating, it doesn't know that. Um, you do not need it as per kind of our guidelines. You don't need to have it for your equations. However, if you feel the need or desire to, you can go ahead. It is possible, yes. Um, where does it understand? Yeah, exactly. Jane, that's right. We're just, since math type is technically an add on, they just don't communicate. Yeah. Accessible reader doesn't know how to handle it. Exactly. It's just one of those things. We, of course, the biggest one, uh, one thing I should mention is. This is the information we have right now. It can always change, it can always adapt. Because um, maybe someday Word will recognize it. Maybe MathTech will just 
become the default in Word, or maybe there will be a different way. Yes, but all mathematical images still need regular alt text. It's just the math type equations do not. Anything else? Oh, for those who use math type regularly, it's fairly easy to create. Yes, shortcuts are great. I didn't um, use them personally just because my brain's a bit stubborn and I type faster than I can click. However, there is an option to create shortcuts. Um, I create shortcuts for fractions, radicals, I use all the time. Yeah. There's a lot in math type, and like I said, go out and experiment. You may find something that I didn't know, like Dr. Bailey knew about changing matrices. I, I didn't know that, you know, or you might discover another niche thing. It's a very complex program. It's very hard to give a 100% complete tutorial. And I was just going to reiterate for a minute what Jemna was just saying uh, here in this last slide even about, um, so we just found recently, Dr. Bailey brought it to our attention. There was some students in her class who told her that like, hey, I can't read these, you know, I open your files and there's no equations. And come to find out it was um, because they were using Word and they did not have math type installed. So some of you may know, you know math type is something that, that we pay for, for um, the faculty in our college to be able to use math type to create equations. Um, so all of a sudden, my first thought was, oh my gosh, we can't pay for math type for all students across campus. That'll be crazy. Um, so we did a little bit of digging and we found out basically the recommendation from math type was to download the free trial and that will install the fonts for math type on, you know, within Word. And then when the free trial expires, you'll still have the fonts in Word. So that's going to kind of be our recommendation for students. That was, Jenna said we kind of worked up a statement on that. And so yeah. we will get that out to uh, the faculty in our college so that you all can use that statement um, to notify your students whenever you're using like a Word document or something that has math type in it. Um, it is definitely a dumb solution. I did yeah. also reach out to IT to ask them like, hey, can you guys put uh, math type, uh, the trial version on Office 365 so that we could have it across campus. And they said that it didn't, it didn't work like that. Like we couldn't just push it out on Office 365 and then everybody has it always. Um, it's really by machine. So they are going to work. They're still in the process of working on this. They're going to push out Office 360 or push out math type on Office 365 on all campus machines. So again, that's going to be covered in that statement that we share with everybody that if they're yeah. using a campus computer, then um, they should be able to to access any of those equations within the Word document. If they are using Office 365 from their own personal device, then they'll need to download the free trial. So I, it's kind of goofy, but anyway, I'll be quiet yeah. now. And another thing I that was also there, um, if they don't want to fiddle with the math type, <laughs> with the math type free trial, you can fiddle with installing the fonts manually. Um, it's not as hard as it sounds. Trust me, when I was reading that, when Jana sent me an email, I was like, oh God, how do you do this? <laughs> but it's fairly easy. And in that statement, there is links to tutorial, like a tutorial page from Microsoft on how to do it. And it, it it's, it's dumb. I don't understand why it's like i mean i understand why it's just kind of frustrating <laughs> um do we have anything else all right i'm going to go ahead and stop the recording um, but if anyone still has questions feel free to stick around <laughs>